Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, I wanted to revisit Sprite for Hire, or Sprite for Hire Runic, uh, mostly because this deck is incredibly awesome, and I do think that there is a lot more to learn about this deck, even though I've already covered it. So, this is basically what I played to get to Master 1. Not entirely, I also played some tier, because I also thoroughly enjoyed that deck. Let me know if you guys want to see a, uh, a video about that one as well, with the new uh, additions. Um, anyway, uh, this is the list that I played. 42 cards seems a bit weird, um, but I basically just modified this from a... Um, from a from Joshua Schmidt, who is a world champion in Master Duel. Uh, granted, he didn't play this, but uh, still. Uh, this is a very interesting deck, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. It basically centers around utilizing Rex to generate advantage because it is a 2, which gets you into the full um, the full floor higher stuff with things like Donner being able to special summon back the Beat, as well as the Rex, as well as uh, cycling Rafael to get additional searches or additional... Uh, they're not searches, they're excavates, um, which is very good. And then on top of that, pairing it with the Runic stuff in order to generate even more card advantage, and also adding in additional like hand traps slash um, interactions as well which is very strong and then ending on a sprite engine to just kind of add that a little bit add that little bit more umph to your end board being able to go blue into jet into a uh, a starter or a smashers which is very very nice um, so yeah all of that kind of just paired it together so let's quickly do the card by card and the explanation I don't think this list has changed since the, the last one but just in case here we have it uh, the uh, the side deck cards or like the um the included tech cards non-engine pieces we have the triple uh maxi triple ash blossom double triple tech and the two called by and that's it because most of the rest of the engine is actually all uh interactions or uh just pure gas so uh we're gonna start off with the fur hires we have the one dompa the one beat and the one rafael as well as triple rex and triple fossil dig and then we have two different uh, for higher cards to search, that being Mayhem for higher, which is just a monster reborn, as well as a rookie for higher, which tributes a monster to special summon a for higher from hand or deck with a level higher or lower than the tributed monster, which is very nice. And with both Beat and uh, Dompa being able to special summon a for higher from hand, this means that if you get them onto the field, you can special summon something from the uh, hand as well, like for example, a Rafael. Um, on top of that, Beat, when it is special, or sorry, when a for higher is special summoned while this card is on the field, you are able to then search out a monster. Now, notably, this works very well with Donner. Donner allows you to tribute itself in order to special summon back two of your Donner or your fur hire monsters in the grave. This means with a two from the runic cards, that being Hugin, you are able to use Rex and Beat, which Beat you get off of the rookie fur hire, which is search off of Rex. This will make more sense when I actually show you the combo. Um, you can then use those two to go into the Donner. Donner can then bring back the Beat, and then in sequence also bring back the Rex, but since Beat was on the field, it can search out the Rafael. Rafael can then be special summoned due to the Beat, and then search out an additional card. On top of this, if you need to, you can also special summon the Dompa. Um, it, depending on what you need. If you have, for example, a beat on your side of the field, you can tribute it off for either a Rex or a Dompa, which is also very nice. And then, of course, you have Mayhem to just bring back a monster if you already have searched out the rookie. Pretty good. On top of that, uh, you have the quick effect effect of Rex in the graveyard to banish and special summon a fur hire from the grave, as long as you control a fur hire. So there's that. Moving on, I'm not going to explain the sprite stuff, but I'm just going to... Uh, showcase what we have we have the two sprite blue the, the one jet the one red and the one carrot alongside one starter and one smashers now notably we're playing one jet and one starter because we don't want to lock ourselves into twos early we want to be able to go into things like fulgo we want to be able to go into things like beat and rafael so we don't want to lock ourselves into twos early so because of that we're only running the one starter and the one jet because we don't want to see those nearly as often, but they are good for the end of the combo. And then, of course, we're also playing the one Gigantic, and one Elf, and one Sprint. Now, honestly, the extra deck is pretty open. There are quite a few cards that you could change. Uh, Sprint is one of them, Zeus is one of them, and Gin Buster is one of them. Um, all of those are very interchangeable. You could play a myriad of other cards. The rest of the the rest of the cards are pretty tight. Um, but yeah, those three happen to be uh, pretty up in the air. You could play a myriad of different cards. Um, so there's that. Mannequin Cat, however, is very important, allowing you to end on an additional two. Uh, that happens to also be a beast. And on top of that, it allows you to uh, just 
summon out a monster uh, your opponent controls to then special summon a wide variety of different cards because uh, blue and jet are darks, red and carrot are fires, the fur hires are all earths, except for Raphael, which happens to be a light, and, well, oh, sorry, I guess Dompa is also a wind, so you have basically every attribute available to you, except, I believe, water, uh, but that's fine. So yeah, uh, Mannequin Cat happens to be, uh, pretty good here. Um, on top of that, we have ourselves the rest of the sprite, or the rest of the engine, which is the runic stuff. Uh, we're just masking, maxing out on the runic stuff, the two fountain, the two tip, the triple flashing fire, the double runic destruction, the double freezing curses, and the double slumber, as well as one runic dispelling. Uh, that's it for the runic cards. I'm not going to explain those as well because they're pretty simple. Uh, and then for the extra deck, we have ourselves the, the two Hugin, the one Gary, the one Gin Buster, one Mannequin Cat, one Gigantic Sprite, and one Zayas as our Xyz. For the Link monsters, we have one IP Mascarena, one elf one sprint the double donner dagger for hire uh you can use either of the effects multiple times which is very nice so being able to do that uh multiple times to either pop a card or to um to tribute off to special summon mostly to tribute off to special summon which is um very good uh, so you can trade like a sprite and a uh a runic for like two for hires if you need to uh, then we have ourselves the one unicorn and then of course we have a double fulgo fulgo is very good it uh Requires three monsters with different types, and hey, most of these are different types, including all of the fur hires. They all happen to be different types. But also, on top of that, um, the the fur hire, not the fur hires, uh, the fur hires and the runics happen to be various different types, which means that you can actually go into this guy pretty easily. Um, then if it's Link Summoned, you can special summon a fur hire with a different type from the three monsters used as its summon. So normally what you'll do is you'll have Rex on your side of the field, Beat and a Raphael on your side of the field, uh, and use all of three of those to go into Folgo. Folgo will then summon out the Dompa. And Dompa also has the ability to special summon from hand, so if you have it in extra name, like an extra Rex or something like that, you can also do that as well uh, to special summon out a, uh, a card. Then also, uh, Dompa has the effect where if a fur hire is special summoned to your field, while this card is on the field, uh, you are able to pop a face-up card on the field, which is very nice because of the second effect of Fulgo. Now, remember, Rex has a quick effect uh, speed banish from grave to special summon, and with Fulgo, if you uh, if a card is destroyed, if your card your opponent controls is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can draw a card, and if you control three or more fur hires, you can draw two additional cards. This means if you have the Dompa on your side of the field, you have the Fulgo on your side of the field, and the Rex special summon, which most of the time is going to special summon the Raphael, but if you expect that your opponent has something like a Bestial, it might be better to go for a beat just to get that guaranteed summon. You are then having three Bisti or uh, not Bestial, uh, three fur hires on your side of the field, which means that after the pop from the Dompa or a pop from the negation from something like red or carrot, uh, or just a runic card, you're able to draw three additional cards, which is fantastic. So that's overall the generation of advan or the the advantage that you generate. Um, and then on top of that, you have all of the runic spells and traps to uh, generate even more advantage. So that's kind of the overall game plan. And uh, let's pop into the duels and show you how this deck performs. All right, so here we are going second, and that is two max C's in hand, but. Trust me, it'll be an interesting duel, I promise. So my opponent is going to go for the Rise Heart here, and then they are going to reveal the Astral Karibo. So, yeah, they're obviously on Kashira. I'm going to go for the Max C here, and then they are going to Ash it. So, okay, no Max C. That's fine. Uh, we're going to then... They're then going to go for Diablosis, which is a bit odd, but notably it can't be destroyed because of Astral Karibo. So there's that. Uh, kind of annoying, but... Uh, it's fine. Um, they're going to banish a card from our, our extra deck face down, and they do, of course, choose the Gigantic Sprite, which is probably the correct choice. This is, again, one of the reasons why we're playing multiple Fulgo, why we're playing multiple Donner, because, hey, Diablosis happens to be a powerhouse of a card that uh, is a problem. But, I mean, Gigantic Sprite is the correct choice here. I don't think that there is a better choice. Maybe you could argue the IP Mascarena or the Elf, um, but I think Gigantic is still good. Um, however, I think seeing that extra deck, I, you definitely go for it. The, uh, the use... Um, the elf. Anyway, we're going to immediately start in the draw phase to go for the Hugin here, just to play around to Droll, just in case. Um, and we grab up that fountain. We also have the Dispelling as well. However, that Maxi turns into a level 2, which now allows us to go into Mannequin Cat. Now I know what you're saying. Why are we going for the Mannequin Cat? Well, Rise Heart. More specifically, it's actually the Ash Blossom, because guess what? 
That allows us to summon out a fire monster, or more importantly, the dark monster, which they also have on the other side of the field, allows us to grab blue. Blue grabs Jet. Jet can then, then grab the starter because we did pitch the Smasher. We're then going to special summon out a second Hugin, which then allows us to shuffle back two. And I'm going to chain block here just in case they do have the Ash. I don't really need the Ash in my hand, so that's fine. I'm going to get rid of it and guarantee that I draw those two because I do kind of need to get into my Fur Hire engine and boom, right on time. Out comes the fossil thing. Uh, so we're gonna grab up the Rex and go for the Elf here. Elf can then bring back the two, which I go for the um, the Maxi here. And the reason for that is because if I go for the Jet, it is a Thunder, which then doesn't allow me to go for Fulgo. So Fulgo, out comes uh, that guy, out comes the Beat. Beat is going to special summon the Rex, and then Rex Effect is going to grab up the Rookie for Hire. Now notably, uh, I did normal summon the Maxi, so I did kind of need to go for this. Um, but that's fine. We now have the Rafael here on our side of the field. And, of course, they did have the Ash. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go for the Rookie for Hire. Tribute off the monster. That's fine. It gets negated, but that's fine. We can just go for the red here, and then I link off into the IP Mask Arena, which this is pretty good. Uh, I just go to the end phase here, and I realistically should have gone to the battle phase and then to the end phase, so a bit of a whoopsie from me, but overall, it's not going to matter. Uh, my opponent just has a Diablosis, and uh, I drew a Max C, so I'm going to Max C them and uh, watch as they suffer. Uh, I draw immediately into Runic Tip, and out comes the Freezing Curse. I'm going to draw the Freezing Curses, banish a Imperm, which is funny, uh, and then we're going to go for the Sprite Elf in order to grab out that red. We're also then going to special summon out the beat here. And I know what you're saying, why are we going for the beat here? Um, the reason for this is so that we have a material for the IP Mask Arena. That's basically all that it is. Uh, we just need a material to go into the Unicorn, and I don't want to use red or something like else. So that's basically it. Uh, we draw a second Freezing Curses, which is funny, and I'm actually going to negate this with the red to pop a card. This allows me to draw a card off of the Fulgo as well. Um, so we're going to draw a card, and my opponent realizes that the game is basically over and just concedes. I have a whole bunch of cards in hand, and I'm going to draw even more. I'm going to deal with their uh, Diablosis. I dealt with their Baron. They have one one card in hand, it's over. Good game. All right, and this game is to showcase just how good the Far Hire engine is. We're going to start off here with Beat, which then can special summon the Dompa. Dompa uh, will then trigger the Beat to add the Rafael, and then we're going to special summon out the Rafael here. And we reveal two cards, which happen to be Fossil Dig and Sprite Blue, and hey, look, uh, Sprite Blue is uh, pretty good. And yes, you can just add it to your hand. Rafael doesn't, uh, doesn't require any specific card you just excavate cards and then you can add one um it's just excavating up to the number of other for higher monsters so because we had two we can reveal two we happen to see that blue fantastic we're gonna go blue grab jet or er, uh grab red and then uh summon the red we're then gonna go for the elf here using the fail and then bring back the blue and link off into that Fulgo. Fulgo with protection from elf is kind of insane. We're going to go for the rex here because we did happen to be able to special summon that uh due to our um uh, due to our Fulgo here. And then we get to go and special summon him back because of the Mayhem to go for the Dompa. Dompa can then allow us to go into that rank 2 Gigantic Sprite, which then allows us to grab Jet and Jet grab Starter. We then can go into the IP Mask Arena. I'm maintaining the Gigantic Sprite because of Fulgo. Because of the fact that we have Fulgo on the field, keeping Gigantic Sprite as just a way to get a monster off of the field for our Sprite Carrot or our Red is very useful. Now we can go for that Gigant or that Sprite Starter to summon out that Carrot and guarantee that we have protection against probably uh, evenly matched, mostly. Um, now we do also have a, the Maxi, but I don't know how much that will matter. So we're going to go for the Maxi here. They are, I mean, it resolves, but we draw a whole bunch anyway, and it's not like we're really going to be drawing into much, because we don't have that, uh, the, the runic field spell. So we're gonna go for the red here, and just special summon it, and out comes Tear. Not, not too surprising, but, uh, yeah, out it comes. Out comes Kate Kalos, and I'm like, that's totally fine. We're gonna act actually activate the effect of the red here, just to negate, um, and we're not going to destroy, I know, kind of weird, uh, but that's fine. We're gonna go for the Rafael here as well, activate the effect of the Rafael, and hey, look, Rookie for Hire, that's actually fantastic. And you wanna know why? Because we can now immediately pitch either the Rookie for Hire or the Rex, which I happen to have in hand, to negate this Foxy Toon. Uh, we can now go for the Nightmare Unicorn as well to prevent our opponent from really doing anything with his kit and immediately shuffle that away. Then in normal, summon out the Jet Synchron, which is wild, and uh, out comes IP Mask Arena. You're going to pitch the Agito, which is, again, interesting, um, but Agito is going to mill a whole bunch of cards, and then they hit the Kelbeck. They're going to mill even more cards. Okay, now it's looking close to deck out. Just kidding, I have 13 cards. It's fine. Um, they're going to go for the uh, Diviner here, and I happen to top deck the Ash Blossom now, which honestly kind of didn't matter too, too much when I saw it, but hey, there you go, and that's the end of the game. Um, I didn't really have anything else there, but I did have Maxi, so, you know... 
All right, so here we are going first once again, and uh, we are going to start off here with the Fossil Dig to grab up that second Rex. Uh, and then we're going to normal summon the Rex and activate its effect in order to grab up Fur Hire, uh, or Rookie Fur Hire. We're then going to grab up the Hugin here, pitching that second Rex to go for the Runic Fountain. Uh, we can then tribute off the Hugin to go for the Beat, go for the Donner, and here is the standard play that you would most likely do. We can then summon the Beat first, and then the second Rex, uh, and then go for the Raphael. Raphael can then be special summoned, and we reveal two, and one of them happens to be blue, which is fantastic. We're going to go and special summon that blue, and grab up Jet. Jet can then be special summoned, and grab up the Smasher. Most of the time you want to grab the Smasher. Um, sometimes you want to grab Starter if you need access to like a monster negate or something like that, but most of the time Smasher is better. We're then going to go for Elf and then into the Fulgo. Fulgo effect will then special summon out the Dompa, and here we can go for the Elf to grab back the Jet. We can then banish one of our Rexes, since we happen to have two of them in the graveyard, uh, to then bring back a monster. Doesn't really matter which one we go for, but we're going for a Gigantic. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, we can then go for the Gigantic, link off, uh, or sorry, summon out the Carrot, link off into the IP Mask Arena, set the Smashers, and pass. We also have the Freezing Curses, which is pretty good, and, of course, the Cockroach. My opponent is going to start off with the Scream, and I'm like, mm, I don't know how much I want to deal with that. So I'm immediately going to deal with it uh, by going for the Special Summon of the Dampa with the Elf, and then Special Summon out the Raphael. The Raphael will chain, be Chain Block with the Dampa. We're going to Dampa pop the Scream, and then Raphael re will, will reveal uh, the Flashing Fire, which happens to be pretty good. Uh, they're going to go for the um, the activation of the Soliac, and I'm going to draw three cards. That's right three cards, and one of them happens to be Destruction and also a Fossil Dig, but, you know, one of them could have been a Maxi, one of them could have been Ash, but they weren't. Um, they're gonna go for the Rhino Heart here, to which I will promptly negate, to which they will try and deal with my Field Spell, and I'm just going to say no to that. None of that. Um, my opponent's then going to go for the, for, the, for the Foolish Burial, and they're gonna go and activate its effect, and then out comes the Havness effect. I'm like, uh, no. Maxi. Uh, so they're going to special summon out the Rhino Heart and then Fusion summon into a Kit Kalos. Now comes the Kit Kalos, and uh, we do happen to draw into a Runic Tip, which is just icing on the cake. Uh, we're going to grab the Dispelling here. They're going to grab the Sheeran, and I'm like, that's totally fine. And they're going to grab the Scream, and I'm like, that's totally fine. And then we're going to go for the Field Spell to shuffle back three of our cards. And then we draw into uh, just everything. Just everything here. Uh, we're going to banish, and uh, out comes the second Scream, and I'm like, no, none of that. Not having it. And, okay, here comes the Sheeran. No, again, no, not happening. Just, you, stop, stop. I get a million cards, you get none. That's how this game works. Um, there you go. We still had the uh, the IP mask right now. I believe we still had the pop as well, uh, as well as slumber and and dispelling. So lots of different things that we could do. If you're wondering why I didn't go for the dispelling, if it sends the cards to the graveyard, like for example, the Sheeran, they just get a free summon and that's not cool. So there you go. All right, we're back with the deck, and in all honesty, this deck is still incredibly fun to play. Hopefully, this gave you a little bit more as to what this deck does and how to play it, uh, because honestly, I would love to see more people play it. It is a very interesting deck to play, and it's also a very interesting deck to play against. Now, it is one of those things where it is playing Runic, so not everyone likes it, not everyone likes playing against it, but it is one of those decks that is incredibly diverse in the way that it interacts with you specifically, because it's not just big full of negate or like big monsters, it's a lot of like, here's a whole bunch of little things that interact with you in very small ways and nothing that's like boom, big, no button, like a Baron or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of like trying to peel apart this deck, which it definitely can. I've seen it done several times as I've played it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a very cool deck. Uh, I would say it's it might be the best version of Sprite right now. Uh, it's definitely the best version of Runic Sprite, um, but there might be, it, I think maybe just regular like Melfi, Swap Frog stuff, Sprite is probably better, um, but hard to say. Uh, I, I definitely think that this is a very strong contender for best uh, uh, for best sprite deck, which is probably the second best deck of the format, or at the very least, I would say it's the second best deck of the format, um, right behind tier. So definitely a good deck and very, very fun to play. It does require a lot more um, thought behind each of its things because the deck is not something that is 
very linear. It does require you to look at your hand and actually recognize what is in it and how each individual thing works, including just typings, attributes, stuff like that, uh, to make sure that you play around things like bestials or what have you. Um, so overall, uh, I do like it. It's a very strong deck, as I've mentioned previously, and it is one of the most fun decks to play right now. So there you go. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, like us very much. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.